Welcome to DRJLT Economics. In this podcast, I want to discuss how AI-powered spamming is changing the way how information is shared and received. And I also want to cover and discuss, indeed, um, the uh, technology and policy behind uh, these uh, spamming activities. First, however, I want to make a brief note that as the Chinese New Year is coming, there are some people illegally, I may add, um, basically popping firecrackers. And uh, so you may hear some uh, background noise as if uh, this is I'm uh, in a war zone. So I'm certainly not in a war zone. Um, well, anyway, let's go to the, um, the topic of the day, which is uh, AI powered spamming. Uh, I want to dis de develop this podcast in three steps. First, I want to talk about the symptoms. Um, and then I want to discuss the, um, the impacts. And finally, I want to talk about the technology and policy behind uh, AI-powered spamming. So first, let's talk about the symptoms. There are two major symptoms, and perhaps you have already been noticing these symptoms, but maybe you aren't aware that uh, it is because a lot of these contents are actually AI generated. And perhaps you have been uh, aware of this, but uh, haven't uh, um, really thought a lot on the uh, uh, what's really behind the motivations behind it. Uh, well, let's just talk about the, these symptoms and see if uh, you, you, you agree with me. The first is that when you do any search using major search engines, you can't find any meaningful content. Or sometimes you can, but a lot of times you can't. Um, it is not, trust me, it is not because these search engines are incapable of understanding your search intent. It is simply that it is um, uh, these search engines are ranking contents generated by AIs higher than contents that you are actually looking for. Sometimes, of course, you are looking for these AI generated contents, but frequently you are not. And uh, um, the search engines are not actually distinguishing clearly whether you are after AI generated content or not. Um, so the, a way that I usually you do to uh, deal with this is to, um, to make um, more specific searches, uh, search a specific site and perhaps search for forums where I usually get, um, you know, for example, if I want to search for uh, information about a certain car model, um, I usually find it more uh, interesting to get information from uh, forums of uh, owners of these uh, of these cars, um, because those uh, other otherwise those blogs and those major websites usually publish contents that are completely irrelevant to uh, what I actually am looking for. But the problem of this is that uh, there is very little discovery, right? I know specific sites, I know a few sites that I may go after, and uh, I know a few forums that I may look for, uh, but uh, I don't know all the sites and I don't know all the forums. So the result is that there is no discovery and I'm not getting all the information that I should um, in making informed decisions. I find that sometimes DuckDuckGo and in, indeed I have to say this, sometimes Google are doing a little bit better, uh, but uh, obviously the worst are Baidu and Bing, Bing being perhaps the, the absolute worst. 
um, you only get irrelevant, uh, almost always only get irrelevant results. I don't know why they are uh, they are actually uh, trying. I think uh, perhaps they should just uh, give up, but they won't. Another symptom, the second symptom, is that you are seeing a lot of cute questions and answers on pages that... Uh, um, that actually the search engines present to you. And of course, the search engines are presenting you with a lot of these people also asked uh, sections. And if you click on one of them, they will give you four or five or 10 more, right? So these, this is um, basically, um, to, the, to a large extent, these po people also ask and all these... Uh, a question and answers are all generated by AIs. They're generated by um, AIs uh, with a specific intention of uh, driving traffic. And uh, these sections usually have zero value. And uh, they usually provide very uh, concise abstraction, of, uh, sub sorry, uh, concise uh, abstract of the information that you are looking for. But uh, they usually, uh, not always, but usually um, the AIs fail to make a complete comprehension of the contents. And so uh, um, you're likely to, to be left with incorrect, sometimes imprecise, and sometimes outright wrong information. For example, if you look for um, the, um, let's say, the fuel capacity of a certain car, how much, or the size of the fuel tank, um, perhaps this car, let's say, let's say one of those German car companies that put uh, um, 10 different engines into the same car, the fuel tanks can be quite different in size, right? But the search engine will give you, say, 60 liters. They will be give a very concise answer uh, and uh, very precise, but wrong, right? Perhaps your card is not 60 liters and perhaps none of the 10 engines is paired with a 10 liter um, gas tank just because there is one high authority, quote unquote authority, um, website that says Mercedes uses 10, uh, 60 liter gas tank in one of their cars, uh, the search engine thinks that Mercedes uses 60 liter gas tanks and all Mercedes has 60 liter gas tanks. That's the way it works, right? Um, and so, yeah, that's another symptom. And uh, um, so that's the first part of today's podcast. Let's move on to the next one, which is that uh, what is this going, what are the impacts of this? I think the impact of this um, basically uh, mod a multitude of them. First is that we cannot get the information that we are looking for. Because there are so much spamming by AI, we can't get what find the information that we are uh, looking for. And since uh, uh, authoritative sources are not, uh, um, how to say, are not really publicly available, not always. For example, uh, if you want to look for the, uh, let's talk again, cars. Let's say you're, you're looking after the wiring diagram of a specific engine, um, right? Um, you search for that info. Maybe that information is publicly available, posted by some enthusiasts in certain forums. But if you look for this information with search engine, and if you don't know the specific forums where a lot of enthusiasts would like to post this type of information, then it's very likely that you are never going to find uh, the information that you are looking for. And uh, the, uh, perhaps the only way to get authoritative information uh, is to pay for a subscription which is not always available, right, from the uh, from the car manufacturer. 
uh, let's say Mercedes, it's not always possible for an individual to pay for, for, for that. Or you can get a pirated copy of their workshop uh, instructions. That's also a uh, possibility, but that is, um, you know, uh, that, that's what uh, people in the know do, I guess. Uh, so that's one thing, you don't get the information. But another thing is that you will not be able to share information because you being an individual, you are not an authoritative figure. You don't have a big media group behind you. And uh, your information is not a, um, how to say, it does not have propagandistic value uh, to, the, um, to, to the search engines, to the media groups, to the, uh, to the establishment. So you don't get to the authority and your contents will not be discovered however great they are, and I don't mean that your contents are necessarily about the economy or about geopolitics or anything that is controversial. It is simply that you as an individual is um, are unworthy of their attention, and therefore um, the information that you provide are of low value and they will not promote it. Now, a way to deal with this is for you to start using AI and generate a lot of uh, uh, worthless content, but uh, um, that is in itself, uh, I think, self-defeating if you want your information to be shared because yes, using AI generate a lot of spam will drive traffic to your website, but it will not um, be your information. Uh, and uh, so that, that way, basically um, unique information is being drawn out by these uh, worthless information. So that's the impact, right? Two sides uh, from the receiver of information and the producer of information. And thirdly, let's talk about what's actually the cause of this. There are two fun, fun foundations. One is the technology that enables it, and two is the policies of the tech companies that made it so. First, um, the technology, uh, we know that, uh, I think it's really in recent years that uh, uh, those uh, deep learning models have become actually not more sophisticated, but aided by advancements in parallel computing um, in graphics card, and perhaps uh, in a strange way, uh, somewhat uh, uh, helped by the uh, crypto boom, which put a lot of demand on graphics cards, and uh, these manufacturers of graphic cards, NVIDIA in particular, made uh, large um, investment and advancement uh, in computational power, and this made it uh, um, uh, possible for a lot of uh, the AI companies uh, to, to really train models that are really large Right, they train really large models with a lot of uh, data, but really these models are not really uh, more advanced or more sophisticated than models of uh, five years ago. Uh, and perhaps in many cases, they are actually simpler models. They just uh, use, um, use brute force to train uh, huge amounts of data. Uh, a huge amount of data. And the result actually, it turns out that uh, um, the results have been somewhat uh, great, right? The AIs will be uh, able to s almost understand uh, people and they are almost capable of uh, dialogue. They are almost capable of creating content. And so, this has made it possible for, um, in the past, what uh, a lot of the spammers did was that they scraped content from other websites. They put, uh, uh, spin uh, I think it's called spinners. They use uh, these uh, content and put it through a spinner. And these spinners uses uh, not really these deep learning models, but they use uh, 
uh, these deterministic, what is it called? Uh, um, oh, well, they, they, they use um, uh, rule-based AIs, right, to basically change out some words, change out... Uh, um the uh, change uh, change uh, change out how uh the voice of the uh of the sentences and perhaps rearrange the sentences a little bit or perhaps uh, make some uh, summaries of certain paragraphs somehow they will produce a new article and this new article will then be published uh as a spam and uh, this is a low effort way for someone to generate a lot of content um, very quickly. But now with AI, if you give, for example, the GPT-3, if you give GPT-3 a subject, say, write, uh, um, write, uh, a write an article on, let's say, uh, let's again talk, talk about cars, on automatic transmissions. And they will, the GPT-3 will write a somewhat coherent article about uh, automatic transmissions. And uh, um, this, of course, are based on the information that, uh, um, that uh, it has learned from it, the materials that it had read, uh, that it had been trained on, right? So there is, again, no guarantee of expertise, no guarantee of uh, correctness, but it's a somewhat coherent uh, writing that uh, is good enough for spamming. So this is one thing. And also um, um, a way to do it, to, to do uh, question and answers with these, um, uh, these AIs is even easier. What are some of the frequently asked questions about automatic transmissions? You ask the GPT, I uh, will give you a list of answers. And then you, uh, you, you, you ask each of these questions to it, and it will give you the answers, uh, right? And so now there is even chat GPT, which you can actually use for free. That actually made it uh, um, so much uh, even more, uh, even easier and even uh, free for people to generate lots and lots of uh, spams. So that's the technology foundation. But uh, this will not have been uh, so bad on um, the digital space without the, uh, the policy, not implicit policy, implicit approval and encouragement of uh, the tech companies. Their explicit policy is that you cannot use AI-generated content, blah, blah, blah. Bullshit, right? Bullshit. They love AI-generated content. And the reason is very simple. First, um, people will be able to uh, will not be able to find the information and they will have to search again. And in doing so, sometimes they will click on ads and more ads, uh, there will be more traffic. People will say more, spend more time on search engines. They will click on more ads and uh, uh, they will watch uh, YouTube videos and they will click again more ads and they will find more videos. So they'll click on more ads. And this continues and uh, the tech companies get to make money. At the same time, the tech companies these days don't simply have a profit motive. They also have a uh, information gate keepers role or at least the somewhat as uh, aspirations as a gatekeeper and so they will um you know uh so 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 they will um basically use these spams to drawn out information that it does not want people to uh to get and so sometimes you also have that aspect uh into the uh in the uh in the in the picture so that's basically the uh, long and short of uh, uh, AI-powered spamming. Um, hope uh, I hope that this uh, this discussion is somewhat interesting to to you. Uh, I hope you've uh, enjoyed it. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe, and uh, uh, you can follow me, of course, on Twitter, on Telegram, and uh, on my own website, Ch Chain Critics. And uh, I think. Uh, in the next couple of days, I will publish, uh, I, I will post uh, another video talking about uh, the situation uh, in 
in Eastern Europe, let's just say, without using the keyword. And uh, uh, I think that's quite interesting as, uh, as well. So uh, don't miss it. Thanks very much and uh, have a great day.